Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's your final exam review. All right, name and graph the absolute value of parent function. All right, so it's the absolute value of x. Okay, so we're going to start at 0, 0. And slope of these is 1, 1. All right, there's your parent function. All right, number two. Describe the transformations. Okay, this is, remember, it has to be H, R, S, V. So it's a reflection. So it's a reflection, reflex over X axis. And it's going to be shift, shift up four units. This one is going to shift left to units okay solve the following absolute value okay first of all you have to uh, isolate you have to isolate the absolute value okay so we're going to isolate the absolute value all right so now the next thing we're going to do is um, all right here we go so right here we're going to divide by negative five and when you divide by negative 5, you get absolute value of 3 plus 4x equals positive 23. So now, two equations. 3x, I'm sorry, 3 plus 4x. So 3 plus 4x equals 23. And the other equation, 3 plus 4x equals negative 23. Because remember, 23 and a negative, an absolute value of 23 is 23, and an absolute value of negative 23 is 23. So minus 3, 4x equals 20, divide by 4, x equals 5. Over here, minus 3, minus 3, 4x equals negative 26, divide by 4, x equals negative 13 over 2. All right, over here, we're going to multiply both sides by 8. That cancels that out. I'm left with absolute value of 7x plus 4 equals 24. So 7x plus 4 equals 24 and 7x plus 4 equals negative 24. Okay? So minus 4 minus 4 and that gives me 7x equals 20. Divide by 7, divide by 7 and x is equal to 20 over 7. Minus 4 minus 4. 7x equals negative 28. Divide by 7. x equals negative 4. Alright? Number 4 Name and graph the reciprocal function. Actually, it's supposed to be uh, rational. Rational parent function. That's 1 over x. So remember, it's going to look something like this. Okay. It's going to look something like that. So number 5, describe the transformation. This is going to uh, shift left 5 units. And then the other one's going to shift up five units. All right, remember, this goes left because it's underneath. This is outside. That goes up or down. All right, simplify this. First of all, we have to factor. This factors into x plus 3 over x plus 3 because the factors are 9 that add to 6. Over, we're going to factor out a 2, and I'm left with x squared minus 9. I still got to factor the denominator. So this stays the same, x plus 3 over x plus 3 over 2 times x plus 3, x minus 3. Remember, this is difference of squares, difference of squares. x plus 3 cancels out, and so I'm left with x plus 3 over 2 times x minus 3, and we can leave it like that. All right, let's see how much time we have. Uh, we've gone through 4 minutes, and we're only on number B. All right, so this is a multiplication. I want to factor this, so this is x. This is the factors of 2 that subtract to give 1, so x plus 2, x minus 1. This one factors into x minus 2, x plus 1. All right? So because it's multiplication, multiply straight across. I get x plus 2, x minus 1, and then I'm going to put that one over here, x plus 1, all over uh, the bottom, so x minus 1. That's that one right there. And then, of course, this right here, x minus 2, 
x plus 1. Now I'm going to factor, I'm going to cancel out what they have in common on top and bottom. So x minus 1, x plus 1, and what I'm left with is x, x plus 2 over x minus 2. And don't forget about your restrictions. All right, on this particular one, it has a minus right here. But notice I have a common denominator. So I have x squared plus 9 as my denominator. Negative 6x squared plus x minus 3. Now this is minus negative 2x minus 4. So we're going to change this to plus, 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 because we're changing all that. We're going to distribute that negative. So what I end up getting is negative 6x squared. We're going to combine like terms, so I have an x and a 2x, which is 3x. And then I have a negative 3 and a 4, which is a plus 1. All over x squared plus 9. And this stays right here. I can't factor it anymore. All right. Let's go to D. In this particular case, it's a plus, so I need a common denominator. So this is x uh, minus 7, x plus 4. Well, notice that this already has... Uh, and x minus 7, and this has x minus 7. So the only thing that's missing is multiplying this by x plus 4 and x plus 4 on the top here. So I have to I have to FOIL these two. So what I end up getting is x squared plus 10x plus 24. All right. Now, this is a plus. So here's a plus. And the other one is minus 12x minus 59 all over x minus 7, x plus 4. So now I'm going to combine like terms. There's an x squared. 10x and negative 12x is a minus 2x. 24 and negative 59 is a negative uh, 21. No, 31. So actually it is a no, minus 35. So all over x minus 7, x plus 4. Now, I can still factor this numerator. The factors of 35 that subtract to give 2. So this is x minus 7, x plus 5. Now notice, this is gone now. So now I can eliminate the x minus 7. So what I have left is x plus 5 over x plus 4. And these are married, so you can't eliminate those anymore. So there's my answer. All right, the next part, simplify. Now this is a big problem. Look, I have this and this. So this is technically negative 5 over x minus 4 plus x minus 6 over 10. Now remember, this is a division. So I'm going to change this to multiplication, and I'm going to flip it. x minus 4 over x minus 3. So I've flipped that already. So now I'm going to work on this. Common denominator, multiply this by 10, and I'm going to multiply this by x minus 4. So what I end up getting is negative 50. This right here, plus x squared, minus 10x, plus 24, all over 10 times x minus 4. I'm going to bring this down now, times x minus 4 over x minus 3. Now, the next thing I have to do is combine like terms. But even while I'm combining like terms, I can eliminate and cross-reduce. So what I end up getting is I'm going to put it in order of x squared minus 10x minus 26 over, that's what I got from this right here, over 10 times x minus 3. And I, I don't have any factors of 26 that subtract to give negative 10. So I'm going to leave it uh, x uh, minus 3. I'm going to leave it like that as my answer. All right, number eight, solve. There's two ways of solving this. I could multiply by x minus 5 here, and I'd get x squared plus x minus 30 equals 11x minus 55 minus 11x plus 55 minus 11x plus 55. And what I end up getting is x squared minus 10x my, uh, plus 25 equals 0. And this is a perfect square trinomial, and the x minus 5 x minus 5, and you would say x is equal to 5. So, but you got to realize x equals 5 will not work because 
x cannot be 5, it would make the denominator 0. So there is no solution. All right. Number 9, identify the zeros. Actually, in this case, that was changed to holes. So we want to identify the holes and asymptotes. All right. This is x minus uh, 3 x plus 2 all over x plus 2. Well, that x plus 2 eliminates, so there's a hole. So x plus 2 equals 0. So wherever x is equal to negative 2, there's going to be a hole. Now remember, since this is gone, what is left over is g of x is equal to x minus 3, which is a line that's linear. So at negative 3, uh, so you got a straight line. But remember, when I go this way, when x is negative 2, so right here, when x is negative 2, so right there, there's going to be a hole. So at negative 2, negative 5 is my hole. And there are no asymptotes. All right, on this one, factor out a 2, and you get x squared minus 9 over, this is x plus 4, x minus 4. This also factors into x plus 3, x minus 3, over x plus 4, x minus 4. Now, remember, there's a few rules. These are my vertical asymptotes. So at 4 and at negative 4 are my vertical asymptotes. These represent my zeros. So at when you put those both equal to zero, I get at plus negative three and at plus three are my zeros. And remember, my degree, this little, actually let me erase that. Since my degree is the same, two and two, that means that you take the ratio of two over one. So y is equal to two over one, which is y is equal to two. And that is my horizontal asymptote. And your graph is going to look like this. And this is going to come up through here. All right. Okay, so that's number nine. Uh, the asymptotes, x equals negative four, x equals four, and y equals two. All right. Now, describe the graph of these functions. Okay, on these particular ones, uh, this is x minus two over x plus two, x minus two. These cancel out, so you're left with 1 over x plus 2. So at x equals 2, that's this part right here, you're going to have a hole. So if I plug this back into here, 1 over 2 plus 2, that's 1 fourth. So when x is 2, y is going to be 1 fourth, so there's a hole right there. Now, with this particular thing right here, there's going to be x cannot be negative 2. So there's where my uh, vertical asymptote is. Okay? Oh, also, because uh, it's bottom heavy, because the degree of 1, you're also going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So this is my horizontal asymptote. On this particular one here, x plus 2, x minus 2 over x minus 2, these cancel out, and you're left with y equals x plus 2 as your, as your equation. But because x minus 2 equals 0, when x is equal to 2, if I plug that back into here, 2 plus 2 is 4. So at 2, 4, you're going to have a hole and no vertical and no asymptotes. Here, uh, there, nothing cancels out. So x equals negative 2 is going to be your vertical asymptote because the degrees are both 1. y is equal to 1 because you have to take the uh, leading coefficients. Okay, graph the exponential parent function. It goes through 1, 1. It's doubling. Remember, there's a 1 in front there. So when, uh, if you do 2 to the first power, that's 2, so at 1, 2. When you do 2 to the second power, that's 4, so 2, 4. And it's just going to keep growing like that. 2 to the third power is 8, so it's going to be something like this. Okay? And uh, how many bacteria were present when it, when it started? Um, well, there was one. And how, uh, how many bacteria will be present after 14.5? Uh, uh, Actually, this one, 
you put this as 100,000. 100,000 equals uh, 2 to the x. Well, you can just do I heart log like that. And so it'd be log base 2 of 100,000 equals x. And when you plug that in the calculator, you get 16.61 seconds. And then how do you prove that this is 1? How do you prove that this is 1? Uh, well, right here. So that's always your starting point. Remember, your y-intercept is always your starting point. Oh, and actually, I'm sorry, actually, how many bacteria will be there after 14.5 seconds? You can just do y equals 2 to the power of 14.5, and you get uh, 23,170.48. All right. Number 12, uh, write an exponential function. Uh, well, this is, remember, it's y equals a times b to the x power. In this case, A is your 100. B, because it's a half-life, is one-half to the X. And that's, how, that's your equation. 13, we're going to use uh, this one right here. So A is actually our amount that we're going to end up with. So 700 is our A. Our initial amount is 300. And it's 1, it's because we're increasing, it's 1 plus our percentage, which is 0 0.075, to the T power. So when I divide by 300, I get 7 over 3 equals 1.075 to the t power. Well, remember, logs. So the log of 1.075 of 7 thirds is t, and that turns out to be 11.72 years. Number 14, we're going to use PERT. So A equals, our P is our 6,000 times E. My rate is 0.05. T is 8. When you put that in the calculator, you end up with 8,950.95. Number 15. Okay, we're at 17 minutes. So number 15, uh, graph the exponent. So we're going to start at 1. So if you do 3 to the first power, that's 3. 3 to the second power is 9, so it's going to increase really quickly. All right, and then the inverse, since you're at 0, 1, and then you're at 1, 3, and then at 2, 9, if you reverse those, 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, 2, you get 1, 0, 3, 1, and 9, 2. Here's your inverse. All right. Okay, number 16. These are real easy. Uh, change it to uh, from write an exponential equation to logarithm. So it would be log base 2 of 8 equals 3. 4 to the second power equals 16. And simplify this. So it's log base 4. That's 64 equals something. So basically, when you do this right here, you get 4 to whatever power is 64, and the answer is 3. Number 19, find the center and the radius. Well, if you're finding the center, uh, you use a midpoint formula. So negative 9 plus negative 1 divided by 2, and negative 6 plus 0 divided by 2. So that becomes negative 5. This becomes negative 3. There's my center. So using the center and a point, uh, so if I use the distance formula of, so negative 5 uh, minus negative 1 squared plus negative 3 plus 0 squared, so you get, uh, plus, plus, so that's uh, negative 4 squared, which is 16, plus 9, so that's 25, so the radius is 5. Graph the equation, so here you have to divide by 64. When you do that, that equals 1. So you get y squared over 4, x squared over 16. All right. And so on this particular one, uh, you start at 0, 0. You go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, 4 to the right, uh, 2 up, 2 down. And there's the ellipse. Number 21 is x squared, or sorry, x minus 2 
squared plus y minus 4 squared. That's my center. And in order to find the radius, you find the distance. So it's 2 minus 2, negative 2 squared plus 4 minus 1 squared. So you get 16 plus 9 square root of 25. So that's going to equal 25. Number 22, write the equation of the circle. So basically, uh, x minus 8 squared plus y minus 7 squared equals 36, as you get a square of this x. Find the vertices. So this is going to be, it's going to look like this. So we need these vertices. So if we're at negative 2 and 1, so negative 2 and 1 is right here. This is going to go up and down 5, so 5 up, 5 down. So this would be at negative 2, 6, and negative 2, negative 4, and those are my vertices. Number 24, uh, identify the conic section. It's an ellipse, so that's at negative 2, the positive 4 is my center. All right, so this is 6, this is 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because it's under the x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, and 5. my ellipse and then finally the last one it has a square so it is a parabola so you get x minus 2 squared equals 12 y plus 1 I'm going to multiply by 1 12th to get rid of that on both sides so I get 1 over 12 x minus 2 squared equals y plus 1 subtract the 1 on both, both sides and I get 1 12th x minus 2 squared minus 1 so um, I'm at, um, if you look here, you get a 2 and a negative 1 as my vertex, so 2 and negative 1. And then because 4a equals 12, that means a is equal to 3, so 1, 2, 3. And that's my directrix, 1, 2, 3. There's my focus. And because this is 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and there's my parabola.